So in the last eight videos in this series, I've shown the inverter that I'm going to use to run my well pump during power outages, along with other loads such as the refrigerator and microwave. I've also built a small 24 volt battery to power the inverter, and it's made out of Nissan Leaf battery packs. Now it only holds about 2 kilowatt hours of power. So I have a truck, an electric truck in my driveway, which has a 15 to 20 kilowatt hour battery pack in it, and it's at 130 volts. So I've purchased a 500 watt power supply that will convert between 130 volts DC down to 24 volts DC. And it's going to be used to charge up and maintain my smaller battery that powers the inverter. Now unfortunately, the power supply I purchased has a 20 amp maximum draw, and if you go above that 20 amps, it'll shut itself down, so it doesn't current limit directly. So I need to put a current limiting device between the power supply and the battery, so that as the inverter draws the battery voltage down, it will only draw a maximum of 20 amps and not shut down my power supply. There's two general ways to limit current. One is a resistor. It absorbs the voltage drop and wastes some power as heat, but it limits the current. The other way is an active system that does something like a pulse width modulation um, step-down converter that will turn on power only up to a certain current and then turn it off after it hits that current. And if it pulses this fast enough, you can maintain a steady current. So I'm going to use a metallic resistor because metallic resistors have a positive temperature coefficient. And what this means is when there's a small voltage drop across them, they have a very low resistance and you waste very little power um, because you're not limiting much current. As the voltage drop across the resistor increases, they start heating up because they're starting to waste some power as heat. Um, but when they heat up, the resistance also increases, which starts to limit the current. And so I'm going to choose a correct number and size of metallic resistors such that around um, one volt drop, I'm going to be hitting about an 18 to 20 amp limit. And so the way my system is set up, um, we're going to be limiting to about 500 watts or 20 amps when the battery is significantly lower than the power supply voltage. Um, and so where do I get these fancy positive temperature coefficient metallic resistors? Well, the simple answer is light bulbs. I've purchased automotive light bulbs because they're a 12 volt nominal system. I'm actually going to be using the high beams and the low beams in parallel on these light bulbs and I'm putting five of the light bulbs in parallel. What this means is I'll have a very low resistance when the power supply is just maintaining the battery and the resistance will build up to the appropriate amount such that it current limits to about 20 amps when there's a large draw on the battery. I spent about $25 on some automotive light bulbs and the sockets for them on eBay. While on eBay, I also found a constant current, constant voltage, step-down power supply. Um, it's difficult to find high amperage power supplies in the this level, um, at least in the $11 price range. And so this one is limited to 300 watts max, and their specifications say 15 amps working, 20 amp max. Um, I don't really want to push a cheap Chinese power supply module that I got on eBay for 11 bucks to the full specifications, so I'm going to be limiting it to, limiting it to about 11 amps, um, which is about 250 to 275 watts at 24 volts, which is just a little under the 300 watt specification. Now when I was testing this active pulse width modulation current and voltage limiter, um, I found that the heat sinks were getting uncomfortably hot, and so I had to spend another $10 on some fans to actively cool the heat sinks, which is what makes me confident that they will continue working for multiple hours while they are recharging my battery. Now, theoretically, an active circuit like this can be more efficient than a passive resistor. However, the Modules you buy for $11 from China or on eBay are not necessarily the most efficient versions of this circuit. So I've decided to test both the light bulb um, resistor current limiter and the Chinese step-down converter current limiter with two different loads to see how they fare.
For the low load test, I use the inverter to run my cable modem and Wi-Fi router for 24 hours. The total draw here is about 60 watts. About half of that is the standby current for the inverter, and half of it is the minor loads of the Wi-Fi router, cable modem, and so forth. Now, after 24 hours using the light bulb current limiter, I recharged the truck and it took 2,200 2,320 watt hours to recharge it. So that basically means just sitting idle, my system takes about two kilowatt hours per day. I'm not going to be running it 24 seven, however. Now with the constant current, constant voltage eBay module on the same test, it took 2,840 watt hours to recharge the truck. So at a low load draw, the simple passive light bulb metallic resistor current limiter works really well because the voltage drop across the limiter between the battery and the power supply is very small and so there's minimal current being lost as heat. How I'm actually going to use this system is to power my refrigerator for a few hours every day and that's going to be a much higher load. So for a high load test I set up a space heater on the medium setting which is about a 900 watt draw and I ran it for two hours. So since my power supply can only do about 500 watts, um, I'm running this off of the battery and drawing that 24 volt battery down low and so the voltage difference between the power supply and the battery is going to start getting higher, which is going to mean more current is being drawn. Um, and we can only recharge the battery at about 500 watts max, so I'm getting a negative 400 or more watt going out of the battery that will need to be replaced after I run it. The light bulb current limiter was able to charge at 18 to 20 amps, and the light bulb started to get hot enough to be visibly emitting light, um, even though the voltage drop was never more than about 1.3 volts across them. The eBay pulse width modulation constant current constant voltage module was limited to 11 amps, so it took longer to recharge the battery from the truck using that. After the batteries were recharged, I then charged up the truck and measured how much power it took. So, the total power used by the light bulb current limiter was 2,511 watt hours, while the constant current constant voltage module used 2,651 watt hours. So in a high draw situation, the constant current, constant voltage module is almost efficient as the light bulb based current resistor, um, current limiting resistor. But still, it's not quite there. Um, also, the light bulbs have a benefit that they can use the full 18 to 20 amps from the power supply, delivering almost the full 500 watts. And so I'm going to be using the light bulb based current limiter. So ideally, I would have found a 130 to 24 volt DC power supply that included a constant current adjustment so I could set a constant current in the power supply and not need an external current limiter. Unfortunately, finding power supplies that go from 130 volts down to 24 volts DC is not as many options as you would expect, and so this is what I came up with. So as you can see from my high current load test, um, the consumption was 1800 watt hours and it took 2,510 watt hours to recharge the truck. So the total system efficiency here is only about 71%. Um, I actually think this is pretty good because I have a lot of efficiency losses. The battery chargers in the truck lose little power. The electrical to chemical reaction to charge the truck batteries and then discharge the batteries loses a little power. The power supply that goes from 130 volts down to 24 volts loses some power. I'm losing a little bit of power in my current limiting device, be it a resistor or an active system. And then if I charge up the battery, the 24 volt battery, there's an electrochemical loss there. And then going through my inverter, I have the inverter losses there. Um, so seeing as how the total system loss is only about 30%. I think that's actually pretty good for such a complicated system. My next video will demonstrate an actual test in a hurricane-like situation where I try to run loads in my house for several days.